Hello guys, welcome back, and we are going to get right into another OpenGL screencast. We're going to go talk about textures today, and I just want to go ahead and say that um, this is probably going to be part one. I'll probably do more, uh, another one on this, um, a little more in detail. This one's mostly a little bit about the setup, um, a little bit of my code, and then kind of just explaining textures briefly. So here we go into our, our main here, and I'm just setting up some details for this screencast. And then round here, after we're initializing our glut, etc., we go ahead and initialize textures. Um, so if we go ahead and make this real quick, just to show you what we got coming up. This is what we com got coming up here. We got our light going around with the textures on there. And um, so let's go take a look. Uh, by the way, if you were to do anything like this before, and then you try to run it, you will end up with a segmentation fault. So that's um, because the initialized textures calls glut commands, and you can't call any kind of glut commands before you initialize your glut. So um, that's the reason that's below all those other things. So a couple things we'll go through real quick. I had a couple of, of variables here uh, in the screencast.h. We have a consonant texture array that holds all of our textures and a current texture. Just that's just the sign for the current texture. Those are new. Um, yeah, within that initialized textures, we are loading up a total of six different textures at the moment, and into that array. And we have a brick, crate, ice, lava, rock, wood. Um, so that's what that does. Um, this is the globals that just make sure that those are actually not just externs. Um, within our draw scene, here we have the 14th screencast added. And then down below here, we go ahead and we draw the light. We set that current texture to the crate. And we draw a cube. Um, uh, I would define each of those textures, give them distinct. Uh, values there. So um, of course the make file is the same. So the two main things that we've got to take a look at here, oh actually make file is not the same. Let me go ahead and show you this real quick before I lie to you. I have a textures uh, class which I've created. So we'll go ahead and actually into that. So this is the texture.h. We have a load text bmp and textures.c. We have two uh, functions in here. The first one is reverse bytes, and the like second one is that load text BMP. This one's static, that's why you don't declare it in your textures.h, because it's just for this file. So I'm not going to go through the details of everything that's going on here, but basically this reads a BMP file. It's got to be a factor of 2 by 2 so it's pretty simple. Um, and then it goes through and makes sure that it's specific to being what we kind of need for this. But what I really want to talk to you about is, so after we get here, we actually assign the image um, memory is down here, which is getting into the OpenGL code. So what this is going to do is it's going to load an image into texture memory. And once it's in texture memory, we can call it any time we want. So like right here, um, well, this is, let's see. Down here, we actually load each of these textures into that texture array, and then we can use them whenever we want, like right here. We assign it to the current texture, which the cube has been changed to, so you'll take a see that in a second. So, getting back to that textures, basically let's walk through each of these, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the cube, and see what's going on with a little bit of it. And like I said, this is probably just the first part of these textures. So first thing we want to do is do the gen textures. And generally with anything with gen in the name on OpenGL basically returns a unused name for you from OpenGL. So this assigns this texture pointer a name, a distinct name. Um, then we take that and we take that distinct name and we bind it to the texture 2D. Um, next we're going to copy that with GL text image 2D. So we're going to take the image that we have that we generated above and we're going to copy that to texture memory with that name. So that the name has been given 
now we have an image that is specified with that. So just briefly walking through what some of these parameters mean. 2D, so these are lining up here, is the first one. The level, um, basically is if you have multiple resolutions, your texture map. Uh, if you don't, then generally you want to do zero with only one resolution. Three, um, for the next one is the internal format. This is the same thing as uh, RGB, so GLRGB, if we had written, see this GLRGB, that's the same thing as the three there. The DX and the DY are from above. They're just the height, or excuse me, width and height of that image. The next thing is if there's a border, which there is not. Format, again, RGB. The type um, is going to be an unsigned byte. And then finally, the texels, which is this image is texels, because it's actually the actual texture image data itself. So. These, these unsigned bytes are what the texels are, that, that type. So next we go ahead and we have text parameter I. And this basically, what these will do is they, if it, the image size doesn't match up specifically, this particular one just says, OK, we'll make it to be linear. So you're free to reuse this code all you want. And then we all, oh, we free that texture image memory before we do anything. We do not free the texture image memory. We free the image memory. Um, the texture image memory is still bound. We are not deleting that at the moment. I will probably show you that next time if you want to delete those out. So, what are we doing here? So we've already assigned those. We So those are loaded when we initialize the entire um, application. So they're into memory as soon as we do that initialize. So down here, they're in memory from here on. So we can call them whenever we want. So here we got the crate going. I set the current texture, and then I have that cube. So let's go take a look at that cube. And I want to refactor this, as you can see. So basically, everything in OpenGL, as per usual, you have to enable it. So we GL enable texture, GL texture 2D. Then we take that current texture, so what is currently being assigned, and we bind it to the texture being used right now. Next, we come down here and we have a few new, for every vertices, we have, go ahead and we specify a GL texture coordinate 2D, or 2F in this case. Um, it doesn't really matter. So these numbers are going to be a number between 0 and 1, which represents that space on the texture. So if you think of 1 as 100% and 5, 0 0.5 is the middle of a texture, um, this will drop four different points the lower left part of the texture, the lower right, upper right, and then the upper left. So counterclockwise as per usual, and those are the four spaces for it. Now you can see this is a GL quad and it's self-contained and end, and there's a new one over here. So if we make this and we go ahead and see it, this is that very first one right there and we can rotate around and see we got a couple more and I didn't do all of them though but you can see there's a green on there too so let's take a look and see what's going on with that so here I go ahead and I specify another texture this is the back one and same coordinates and then it, it does not have its own um, texture here or excuse me quad it uses the same one and then I go ahead and I specify a color. Um, let's copy that out. So I specify a color, and then I end the textures here, and I disable textures. So um, we go ahead and load that. Here's the front one. Here's the back one, not colored. Here's the side one, which is, and then there's the green on all those. So you can see the texture itself has a brown color, but when we specify the color with it, the texture is actually colored by that GL color. So that makes it really interesting so you can use different textures or use the same texture over and over again with different colors to kind of just add a different feel so you don't have to redraw every single uh, reload in texture memory a bunch of different objects if they're just slightly different colors. So you can definitely play with that and it's uh, something interesting worth noting. So Going on here, uh, let's play around a little bit with these texture coordinates and show you what can happen if you have odd texture coordinates. 
So let's go up just to the first one. And let's say I do 0 0.5 here. So I'm going to start from the middle for this vertices of that texture. So as you can see, it already looks a little bit warped. So you can see it's like angled out this way instead of being the way it should be. So these three points are the same. This one is not, which is the, um, I guess these are yx. Sorry, sorry about that before. So if I go ahead and change that to 0 0.5, make that, it'll be the same. So you can see it's kind of still funky, but it's not exactly the way it should be because it doesn't have that border around it right here. You can see, so you got a little bit here, but not, not over there. So it's just kind of interesting. You can uh, take a look at and try different things here. Let's do a 0.5 for those. So this is now distorted down here. So lots of interesting things that you can see how the texture coordinates work. We'll play around next time with spheres and cones and other shapes so you can kind of see how they work. Um, we'll all, maybe also take a look at having how textures repeat themselves. So in fact if you want to think about this right now, this texture is only declared once uh, up here and every quad is actually in, ends up being its own repeated section. So that's the fact that this repeats twice here, once, twice, is due to the fact that the textures repeat themselves. So you have to explicitly make them different. Um, generally you want to go ahead and not uh, do like a quad like I have here where it's two different ones because that's generally kind of um, not how you want it. So uh, finishing up here you can kind of see here there's a um, let me zoom in real quick you can see it's only that bottom left portion of that texture so you know that's what happens when you do like 0.5s all along so anyway uh, I think you guys get the gist of things here I will talk more about some other shapes and what their texture coordinates should be next time and maybe we can look at um, a little more repeating action and stuff like that so I hope this has been uh, helpful for you guys so you can start to see how I uh, don't really use materials as much, but I used a lot more textures to make my things look neat. So um, talk to you guys soon, and good luck.